if you've had a worm bin more than a couple minutes, then you've got experience with mites. In this short episode of Coffee and Compost, we're gonna go into what mites are, what they mean for your worms and your worm bin, and how to eradicate them if you even need to. My name is Steve Churchill, and I own the Urban Worm Company. Mites, we've all had them. When you're trying to keep a worm bin nice and moist without it being wet, then it's really easy to overdo it a little bit and attract these little critters. Mites are arachnids, which is the same class as spiders and ticks. Now mites are everywhere. They're uh, on animals, they're on fabric, they're in the soil, they're in our bodies, and of course they're in your worm bin. The mites that you find in your worm bin are there because they wanna feed on dead and decaying matter, and they wanna do it in moist conditions, just like your worms. So instead of looking at these things as pests, it may be better to think of them as liking the same things that worms like, so it doesn't mean you're necessarily doing something wrong if you've got mites. Now, while some may be predators, most are detrivores, meaning that they feed on dead and decaying organic matter, just like worms. They also love really moist conditions, just like worms. So if you've got dead and decaying organic matter in a moist environment, that's also called a worm bin. Mites are generally harmless to worms, but you may every now and then see mites attacking a dying or dead worm. It doesn't mean that they killed that worm. Worms are gonna live about a year to a year and a half. So let's call it 550 days if it's a year and a half. A normal worm bin, a normal size worm bin, like the Urban Worm Bag or something else, is gonna have probably 2,000 to 6,000, maybe even 8,000 worms in it. So it's not a matter of if you're gonna have worms dying each day, it's a matter of how many. So when those worms die, it should not surprise you if the mites that are in your bin end up eating that worm. So if you don't want mites in your worm bin, and I understand that a lot of you wouldn't, then our first goal is to try to prevent them in the first place. So moving forward, what you wanna do is make sure that your worm bin is a little bit drier than what it is right now. I would remove the cover, maybe unzip the top if you got an urban worm bag, let that bin air out a little bit, let some of that evaporation happen and that's gonna dry things out. The other thing that you're gonna to wanna to do is, is add bedding with each feeding. This is a normal practice anyway, something you should be doing anyway. Uh, you wanna feed uh, bedding to food waste in a ratio of about two to one by volume. This is gonna soak up that excess moisture that your food waste releases as it breaks down. Now moving forward, you need to understand that if you're trying to emulate what you see on YouTube where people are showing you their worm bins with uh, cantaloupe and watermelon in them and the, and the worms are just swarming them, the mites are gonna swarm them too eventually. So just keep that in mind that if you are trying to get the worms to attack something wet and sweet like that, the mites are probably gonna end up showing up to the party too. So if you can't prevent them, how can you at least get rid of them? Well. Again, we just want to dry out our worm bin a little bit. Go ahead and keep that uh, the top of that worm bin open and that's gonna dry things out. It's gonna make it less hospitable for the mites. The next thing you can do is add diatomaceous earth to your worm bin. Now diatomaceous earth is a, is a, is a powderized form of crushed fossils, um, oceanic fossils. It's crazy that this even exists. But uh, it feels really soft in your hands, but it's very, very abrasive to a hard-shelled pest because what happens is the uh, microscopic jagged edges on the edges of the diatomaceous earth will scratch the exoskeleton of those mites, eventually dehydrating and then killing them, which would be a terrible way to die. Now, there's two things to remember with diatomaceous earth. The first is that you wanna use food-grade DE. If you don't use food-grade DE, if you're using something that's like that you would put in a swimming pool filter, then then you are likely going to kill your worms along with the mites. But if you're using food grade DE, then you'll kill the mites, but you'll leave the worms alone. The other thing too, is that you wanna sprinkle DE on the surface of your uh, worm bin, uh, on the surface of your vermicompost anyway, because once DE gets wet, it loses its effectiveness. So don't mix it into your uh, vermicompost, go ahead and sprinkle it over the top, and that should help take care of those mites as well. Now it's always better to treat the cause than the symptom. So instead of relying on DE, let's kind of solve the problem in the first place, which is just keeping your worm bin a little bit drier than it is right now if you've got mites. So what you wanna do is you wanna keep your vermicompost at about 70% moisture. Uh, those moisture meters you can get online are okay, but they can be unreliable because they start to corrode over time. Your hand is gonna be the best uh, gauge of moisture for you. So what you're gonna do, you're gonna pick up some vermicompost, hopefully without too many worms in them, squeeze it as hard as you can. If you get a one or two drops that comes out between your knuckles, then that's about 70%. 
More than that, then you need to add some dry bedding, let it air out, and then dry out your vermicompost a little bit. Okay guys, keeping a worm bin too wet is one of the six most common mistakes that vermicomposters make. I wrote about this plus the other five mistakes in a short ebook that I put together that you can download immediately. Go ahead and click uh, above my uh, left shoulder here. It's gonna take you to a page where you can sign up for my email list and you can get that guide right away. Thanks everybody, I will see you on the next video.